Hi, welcome to this channel on Magnetic Energy Technology Principles Applications. This video is about the Mini Romag Magnetic Energy Generator. This is highly unconventional information, unless of course you're in the top secret lab. Um, if you guys want to follow along in the top secret, just bust out your Mini Romag or turn it off and, and you can follow along with this video if you want to just for fun, <laughs> since I know that you have them. <laughs> so anyway. Um, so the mini Romag generator is a smaller device. Here is an example of the rotor. Okay, so you can see that. Now you'll notice the materials are always of the utmost importance on these devices. And so as we have the brass, not only the brass shaft going in here, but the brass rotor, the thing about this, this type of metal and the combination of elements that is in brass and its ability to respond when we start a neutral magnetic draw factor from the atmosphere and the ability of brass to actually hold on to that energy and release it. So it's, yes, it does have paramagnetic and diamagnetic properties, but it's not just that. It's, it's this ability to maintain a charge but not hold on to it too strongly. So this rotor becomes very significantly charged in the operation of this unit. And these drawings, Caleb here, thank you so much for doing these renderings because they're just so darn cool. And this is, if you don't have the stator, like then it would look like this with all these magnets that are on the rotor basically. And then, and then this would look like with the stator actually put on there. And here's, Here's just the, the raw stator with nothing on it. So you can kind of see how, the, the reason the slots are longer on this is because it kind of maintains a grounding into the base. And so, and aluminum is such a huge factor in this. And so like the base of this and, and along with other units is often aluminum because it does this defracting, de, defracting? It does this deflecting and kind of bouncing off of neutral magnetic energy, if you want to call it that. Now, yes, this unit does not generate electricity in the conventional sense. Now, people all the way back to Tesla would say it's a form of cold electricity, or some people will call it like a blue electricity. So it has like some of the same properties as electricity, but it doesn't have the spark and it doesn't have the heat and it doesn't have the shock factor. Now, of course, we call it neutral magnetic current because of the ability for the, the current that this produces to be attracted to another source. This unit in and of itself, is designed to produce neutral magnetic current that is attracted by another unit and so they work in conjunction with each other in this particular configuration this is like an example if you can see like how it looks if you have the magnets fully like mounted and everything in there and this would be an example of like one of the magnets just wound with the copper coated steel wire if you can see that now check out the layers though the layering on this is so bizarre and i know there's a lot of people that work on free energy devices out there that just simply have magnets in and they're trying to create electricity with the you know either over unity or configuration of magnets and blocking shielding magnets and then getting them to repel each other and all that and that's fine i mean we've done the same thing and we've proven that you can have rotating rotating motors and stuff. Uh, we've never really gotten a lot of horsepower out of that and it's not something we promote because we're not really, I'm not here to promote electricity as a, as a production of these units because our whole world, this is the whole model of this channel is the magnetic energy model. And so if you, and there's a lot of implications to that globally and beyond. So, but back to the rotor. So the layers are very interesting because we start with like what is conventionally like a dielectric. So we're using mica insulation lines each of these layers. But mica in the neutral magnetic world, in our neutral magnetic world, mica does a lot more than just shield the rotor from the magnets and the current that's ha that flows through these wires. And so it has this interesting like property where it helps amplify like neutral magnetic energy and magnetic fields once the energy, once the fields around it are, are stimulated to a certain degree and at certain frequencies. And so a lot of people work on, I was saying they work on these free energy, other types of free energy devices designed to produce electricity. And if you take 
the principles in this unit and you contain your magnets the way that I'm talking about in this video and that are outlined on the website, it will increase the efficiency of your unit dramatically. And one of the reasons for that is, is when you have like mica lining a thing and then you have the magnet inside of that slot, and, and then you have the copper coated steel wires around this and then <laughs> beneath that <laughs> we have these little like a, a U shape of the copper coated steel wire goes right on top of the mica and then the magnet sits in those U shaped wires and you can kind of see those if you look on here they're like these, these side th things and so what they do is they help channel or like distribute the opposite opposing side or field or polarity of the magnet into the stator. So the copper coated steel wire helps that that other polarity on the back side of the magnet travel out to the stator, which is really important because we are tr it helps defeat the hold back. So we're creating these poles in this stator, and there's and this thing spins at you know 1400 RPMs. So we're creating creating a tremendous amount of poles that are releasing and building in the stator. And the way the thing is wound, there's a thinner layer of copper wires on a fatter on a fatter layer. So we're really we are focusing the energy, and then it has this back winding on it. And this is like this. This goes back to like Tesla windings and stuff and like Tesla type of rotors where you have this whole back winding and so you produce this interesting effect where the pole is temporary and then it interacts with the poles of the magnets while they're spinning. So it, it makes a very interesting interaction and all of these, of course, all of these coils on this stator are interconnected. Now all of the magnets on the rotor are interconnected through the copper coated steel wires that are around are, that are wound around them not only that but we alternate the polarities of the magnets north south north north south north south north south all the way around so that we are producing what we would call a balancing or neutral field a neutral pulsing field in the stator as the rotor winds, as the rotor spins. And so it's, this is really important because it's, it allows for what we would say is the, the draw factor to the ionosphere or the etheric energy, if you want to call it that. Now, so it creates a two way street between the ionosphere and the unit when it gets up to its proper resonance and its pulsing rate. And so when that's detectable, that's measurable above the unit and below the unit. So then just to clarify, this enhances the energy of the ionosphere, it builds it at the same time as it helps balance it out. So we're not draining anything. This is a neutral system that fully recycles all of its energy. So as it builds those fields and it builds those pulse rates, the whole unit starts pulsing and the energy fields around it become quite large considering how small the unit is. And it kind of has this whole toroidal manifestation, this whole toroidal field. Actually what it is, is it's two toroidal fields that are counter rotating, counter rotating and pulsing at the same time as a stream of energy goes up from the unit and then down into the earth. And all of that is measurable and it's all pulsing and counter rotating. So the good thing about this type of unit is it's fully scalable and it's modifiable. So like for example, if you add a commutator and if you add additional circuitry and you add like discharge coils to it, the unit would be able to spin on its own. And those modifications of course have already been done and that's fine. I'm not here to promote that because I, actually I'm not even allowed to show a running unit, let alone I can't even sell the parts for the unit. But what I can do is at least try to explain the theory behind it and show you some of the parts so that you get a general idea of what's happening. Now another interesting, really an interesting little tidbit of layer is beneath this copper coated steel winding that's on top of the magnet is mylar insulation. So it has this 
this paramagnetic effect where it's just enough shielding between the magnets. So it's kind of insulation, but it's kind of shielding. So what we're doing is we're creating this really nice directional field of the magnet that tends to, instead of blossoming out like a mushroom, it goes forward like, and so it keeps them all contained. So they hit the stator very specifically in their pulsing. And so there's not a lot of blend over and bleed over into the other magnets, which makes it so much easier when you're switching polarity so fast to, con to have continuous rotation, to break the magnetic hold back with the opposing polarity. So there's always an attract field ahead of every field that's being created by this, by these magnets and in the stator. And as long as you're drawing with this current configuration, as long as you are drawing off the neutral magnetic current, you create fields like ongoing alternating magnetic fields, alternating magnetic poles, if you want to call them that, that can that provide with continuous rotation, that help with continuous rotation. Now, I can't even talk about how what unit to connect this to to make it run like permanently but i will tell you though that the pump unit on the website gives you the clues and the principles and all the information that you need for a unit that can attract neutral magnetic current and keep a unit like this running in conjunction with a unit similar to that or something similar to that now because of the size of this and and how safe it is for like the life forms around it. So for people, for animals, for plants and everything. This is one of those units that like in the future will be, not only can it be scaled down, it can be scaled up, but that it can it can work in conjunction with the human body. So it can help with, it, it'll probably be a medical device and other medical devices like this. Cause not only can it help heal the human body and charge the human body with like neutral magnetic energy, it can charge um, devices around the human body to help with medical devices. It can do things like this, like this type of device where it's like charging crystals and helping charge crystals with neutral magnetic current and then giving those crystals the ability to do different things. And so it's it's a very versatile unit. It'll also be ideal for helping to charge water for agriculture and for consumption and, and making that water incredibly powerful. So there's there's so many like uses when you come when it comes to like interacting with a unit safely and in a way at a level that doesn't hurt you this is the type of unit that it cannot really it won't hurt a person at all and not that the other units are going to hurt because they don't produce electricity and they're not going to like shock someone to death but it's that you have this it's a very like modifiable manageable level of neutral magnetic current that can charge like fields around people people and charge devices around people, medical devices and, and all kinds of cool technology that will be available in the future. And so just, and, and even the, the crystal world and the crystal energy is going to be such a huge thing in the future. And this type of device will help with that whole, that whole paradigm and the unfolding of all that and how to use those for transportation and anti-gravity and healing and communication, teleportation and all of those cool things that this type of technology is capable of doing. So I thought it would be important. It's finally, I guess, finally the time that I just talked a little bit about the mini Romeg and kind of get your wheels turning and get you thinking in terms of what magnetic energy can do and what the different devices are capable of and and really how simple and elegant the design is but it's it's interesting like even this this particular like unit um that's not a really good example we have better <laughs> domes than that like acrylic domes but even this it has to be contained while it's running it has to be like contained in say a plastic or an acrylic dome, something that doesn't interfere with the magnetic flow. And part of that is because not only does it help with the wind resistance, but it helps with containing the charged particles that 
like are created in this small atmosphere like inside of a dome and I think it's oh yeah you can see it on the other pictures back here where there's a small dome over it and so even that those charged particles in there contribute to the magnetic the neutral magnetic current production of the unit so even when you remove the plastic top like the plastic cover of it or the acrylic cover, whatever you use, that doesn't, the unit will stop running because it has to have that buildup of energy and the air molecules that are inside of there are critical to its functioning as well. So you have all these interesting layers where we are shielding the magnetic, the magnetic field around the magnets, we're focusing them outward, which makes it so much easier to like just con turn them on and off essentially when we want them to be like not influencing the next line of polarities coming in so that you can produce continuous rotation but it's it's also just the tricky way that the magnets are interconnected from pole to pole and like opposite poles. So the interconnection of the copper coated steel wire is so critical because what happens is, is it all of the magnets when they start pulsing, they start communicating with each other through the copper coated steel wires that are interconnecting them. So they all kind of start to balance each other out. Now the power of that is, the draw factor, if you want to call it that, that the connection that's made, the vortex of energy that comes into the unit when it's functioning, which is measurable, but it comes in through this kind of random pulsing. So you don't really, it's like, just like I always talk about in these videos, magnetic energy is a random process. And so it's always important to, when you're drawing in that energy, to be able to accommodate a random stream of energy. Now think about that in terms of your, your meditation or your creative or your co-creating with the universe. You gotta be willing to allow random energy into your thought process, into your life. And then what happens is, is so you'll have spikes of energy around when it doesn't really make sense. There's no reason for there to be spikes of energy, but they immediately dissipate throughout that winding to the other magnets. So the magnet Magnets perform above their grade, if you will. They perform high above what they are manufactured to do because they're getting boosts of energy in them, but the boosts are coming randomly. But because we have like all those, you could say they're like distributive connectors, they you see this like they'll get a boost and then an immediate balance of energy, boost, immediate balance of energy as that goes throughout all the magnets, which results in the whole thing manifesting as one kind of large pulse that goes around the whole rotor in the unit while it's functioning, which is really fantastic. And so it's, it, it's, it's revolutionary, it's incredibly simple, but it's also revolutionary. And the next stage, and, and this is a gateway unit, to the max, this is a gateway unit. This can lead to so many discoveries because it's mostly like a scientific model, it's like a tool for scientific discovery, more probably more than anything else. And so it can lead to all the understandings of pulse rates and this etheric flow and the magnetic energy flow and the attraction of likes and all this stuff and lead to countless other types of units and designs. So with that, if you have questions, of course, please send them in because it's cool. I, I, I love having conversations about this. And yes, of course, this is unconventional. You will not see this in a textbook in any school, university, or whatever on the planet. Now you will see it, of course, in certain facilities. But with that said, um, I thank you, and uh, we'll see you next time.